Hi, my name is Simul, and I'm going to share with you exactly how I ranked in the top 10% of the state, receiving an ATAR of 93.35. I'm going to be completely transparent and upfront with you. This is not gonna be your standard video. I'm not gonna tell you to do this or do that or you know have a timetable that you follow or be extremely organized in this way. There's so many videos I can tell you to do that. And perhaps if I was a little bit more organized, then things would have turned out a lot better. I'm sure I would have gotten better grades and whatnot and be less sleep deprived and probably a lot more happier at school. But what's done is done. Can't change the past, it is what it is. But I still thought I might just share with you what I kind of did in my own organized mess of a way to get the marks that I got. And hopefully you can get something out of it. So these are three things that I did towards the final years of high school that helped me get the marks that I got. One, I chose subjects that I was really good at or that I really enjoyed. Now, if you're already locked into your subjects and some of those subjects you actually don't like and you aren't good at, then don't freak out. Like there's still heaps of things that you can do to do well on those things coming in the next two points. But if you haven't chosen your subjects yet, then please, please, please choose subjects that you are good at or you really enjoy. In fact, if you can try and get both those things, that'd be really, really awesome. I'm going to get super nerdy, so just bear with me for a second. Here's a matrix that you can use to help you choose your subjects. So we've got good, not good, enjoy, do not enjoy. Now, ideally, you wanna choose subjects that you enjoy and that you are really good at. Our best chance at getting good marks and enjoying school would be to choose subjects that fall into this quadrant right here, quadrant one, where these are subjects that we enjoy and that we are really good at. Now, if you don't have enough subjects in that particular quadrant and they kind of spill over into quadrant number two and quadrant number three, subjects that you enjoy or that you are good at, then that's absolutely fine. The only key thing here that you need to remember is, is do not by all means under any circumstances choose quadrant number four unless it's a prerequisite. If I chose history, literature, biology, chemistry, I would have very likely not enjoyed school and have done pretty poorly because those are subjects that do not resonate well with me. So instead, I chose to do two math, physics, Chinese second language, business management, and I think my last one was English language. Now this may sound like a crazy load, and to be honest, it was. Like, so I can't believe I actually did it. Like it freaks me out thinking about it. I would not want to do that again. But because these subjects were subjects that I genuinely enjoyed, and most of them I was good at, I was more than happy to put in the necessary effort to get the marks that I wanted. I suppose the key overarching thing over here is, is you have to identify your unfair advantage. The thing that you're good at that kind of separates you from everyone else. Now, if you're unsure what that is, try asking yourself the following questions. What am I good at? What do I enjoy? What am I good at that other people find quite difficult to do? When you find an answer that kind of matches all three of those questions, then you're pretty much right on track to identifying it. Okay, now the second thing that I did. I have mentioned this to a lot of people. I do not think that I would have gotten the marks that I did if it weren't for the people that I was surrounded by. Because I felt like, because they worked really hard and they set themselves really high goals, I did the exact same thing. Like, it completely fits what Will Smith once said. You are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And I truly believe that. Like the fact that my friends worked so hard and tried every single time to get better and better and better meant that because I was seeing that and I was absorbed in that type of environment daily, it was like I just kind of fell into those same behaviors and adopted the same values that they had. I once heard in a podcast with James Clear and Dr. Rangan Chatterjee that uh, we greatly underestimate the influence that our social group have on us. If we surround ourselves with people that work hard, that are high achievers, that have great values, then we'll very likely adopt the same values and behaviors as them. My best mate was the type of student that looked like he didn't try at all, but he got exceptional marks. Like what took him one hour to understand things would take me like three or four hours but I put in that time and energy anyway, just so I can kind of remain at his level, or rather like just underneath him. This leads me on to my third and last point. There is no substitute for hard work. You think that if you choose a subject that scales better, if you do this or you do that, then you might get a better score. Maybe, but at the end of the day, it ends up being all up to the effort that you put in. A big reason why I did well was because I spent time, energy, and a lot of effort into studying and working really hard, even when I didn't want to. Now, I could have been way more efficient and way more organized if I used study techniques like Ebbinghaus's space repetition and active study, but I didn't. I didn't know of those techniques then. I just put in a lot of hours and that seemed to do the job for me. 
I'm not saying this is the right way, by all means at all, right? I feel like if you have hard work and you get good results, that's cool. But if you have like hard work plus systems, that's like, that's like just so good. So if you are someone that wants to do well and you do want to enjoy school, then I do believe that those three things that I shared with you may help you get there. May not be efficiently, but if you choose your subjects well, you surround yourself with people that lift you up and inspire you to set your goals high and you work really hard, then I feel like you'd be better off than if you didn't do those three things. And so those three things help me rank in the top 10% of the state and get a decent ATAR. If you found this video helpful, please make sure that you do like it, subscribe to the channel below, check out this video over here, that might help you out. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye.